My commuting power. Once, yeah, and I actually yeah. think if you're a woman, that might be the, the worst moment J.D. Vance had because he was going to mansplain right over that mute button. Um, he was, uh, and again, I don't pretend to know how everyone will react to this. I think that a lot of women um, in positions of authority that should command respect just by virtue of that dynamic will see themselves and some do that disrespected them and talked over. Uh, you know, I, I mean, there was a moment like that with, with the vice presidential in the Harris uh, Pence debate. Let me be clear. If your takeaway of the Vance Walls debate was JD Vance was mansplaining, you're probably a female anchor on MSNBC. And that's all. Oh, no, wait. You could be this doctor here, this doctor on social media who said JD Vance talking over the female moderators. We women have all been there, over talked by an entitled mansplainer. Well, uh, what's the difference between being an anchor, a female anchor on MSNBC, or being just a troll on Twitter? Uh, honestly, I think the difference is the camera. Tony Katz, uh, Tony Katz today, 833-468-8669, 833-GOT-TONY. I want to let you know now, I want to give you fair warning, ladies and gentlemen, because I worry about you, because I care about you, because I do not want you to be triggered. There's about to be some mansplaining up in here. It's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay f- calm. Wait, 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 wait. What's going on? Holy crap, I am freaking out. I, Tony Katz, am about to mansplain the mother out of this debate. I'm going to be mansplaining so much, some of you are going to get pregnant. That is the level of mansplaining that's about to go on. I'm a man, ladies and gentlemen, and I explain things. It's my job, and ladies, I swear, I swear, if you're offended by it, or if you know somebody offended by it, guaranteed you should A, get help, or B, stop being that person's friend. There's nothing that J.D. Vance said that was wrong when he had two moderators who were interrupting him as he was trying to explain what temporary protected status is regarding Haitian immigrants. He was in the right. And for Nora O'Donnell and Margaret Brennan to try and stop him from actually setting the record straight, that was the malpractice. That was the problem. And if you cannot say to a female moderator, hey, wait a second, you're getting this wrong. You're misrepresenting my position. I have the, the, the right. It is necessary for me to get it right for the American people who are going to be voting for president and vice president of the United States. If that's mansplaining, then women can't moderate debates. We're done. All out, all clean, all through, all set. The problem with that argument is that it is very insulting to women out there who aren't somehow offended by this level of insanity. This is leftist talk, not rational talk. Normal women aren't offended by a man explaining himself, explaining his position because normal women by definition are normal and are not completely insane and pretend weak remember nicole wallace who you heard there from msnbc making this statement is pretend weak this is just something you say this isn't real She's not really offended. She just wants other people to make the claim of being offended. So therefore, they have something to talk about. Oh, look how offensive J.D. Vance is. The way he mansplains. Oh, it's just gross and disgusting. Now is the time for a woman. The future is female. Which, uh, so we're clear, is one of the more dystopian things I have ever heard. The people who wear those shirts and make that statement, the future is female. Not the future is a good time. Not the future is going to have loads of bourbon. Not the future is going to involve, finally, the flying cars we were promised on the Jetsons. Oh, hell no. The future is female. Well, after that happens, it kind of dies out pretty quick. What? It's, it, I'm, I'm just taking their argument to its end conclusion. Their argument is ugly. Their argument is just gross and weird and not... Their argument is this weird kind of reverse handmaid's tale, which might be a sexual thrill for them, but it won't be uh, sexual for, for long. <laughs> that, that much is true.
Let's discuss the actual things that took place in this debate. A debate that J.D. Vance won based on the presentation. Don't ask me about the actual content because one of the things I learned from this debate is that conservatism is alive and well, just not in anybody running for president or vice president. It's not. It's not. It's If you're defending saving Obamacare, chances are we have a serious disagreement about our politics. He's a populist. He is what he is. And there were a series of subjects that did not get discussed in this debate that should have. Let us, for the moment, leave that to the side. And let us address the fact that J.D. Vance, on every single question, sans the last ridiculous, pathetic question from Nora O'Donnell and Margaret Brennan about January 6th. He leaned into every question. He had an answer for every question. He wasn't reaching for the answer. He had it. You could see the Rolodex spin to the subject. He pulled out the index card, and he started talking. Uh, a, if, if you don't know what a Rolodex is, you might want to ask uh, your, your parents or maybe ask Jeeves on, on, on the CompuServe. That'd be, that would be the thing to do. That's a hat tip to Fingers Malloy right there. He had the answers. He went right to it. He was in full command of the facts, and even when taken by the moderators a little bit off of the subject, he brought it back. He could go on a tangent and then come back and say, now what we were discussing is, based on what you're saying is, to respond to your question, to respond to your statement, to respond to that accusation, again and again, and it was really, really well done. If the objective in this debate was to try and paint J.D. Vance as weird, objective failed. If the objective was trying to show him to America as weird, objective failed. J.D. Vance was on it. And remember, I wanted Sarah Huckabee Sanders. I didn't. I never doubted J.D. Vance's skills. I just thought she would be, as I've often discussed, an easier lift. J.D. Vance had a rough couple weeks when the uh, when the campaign started, and then he was just doing the job. And even with the whole eating the dogs, eating the cats, he kept doing the job. He's very, very good. As we have discussed, he's going to be exceptional. In Ohio, where he is the center. In Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan, which is why, of course, he's on the ticket. And the guys and the lady folk, you see you see that? Just want to make sure everybody knows how mansplaining I am. In Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, they were all paying attention. They were watching, seeing a guy who could talk to them and actually could answer a question. The Wharton School has done an analysis of the Trump plan and says it would increase the nation's deficit by $5.8 trillion. My question is the same for you. How do you pay for all that without ballooning the deficit? I'll give you two minutes. Well, first of all, you're going to hear a lot from Tim Walz this evening, and you just heard it in the answer, a lot of what Kamala Harris proposes to do. And some of it, I'll be honest with you, it even sounds pretty good. Here's what you won't hear, is that Kamala Harris has already done it, because she's been the vice president for three and a half years. She had the opportunity to enact all of these great policies, and what she's actually done instead is drive the cost of food higher by 25 percent, drive the cost of housing higher by about 60 percent open the American southern border and make middle class life unaffordable for a large number of Americans. If Kamala Harris has such great plans for how to address middle class problems, then she ought to do them now. Not when asking for a promotion, but in the job the American people gave her three and a half years ago. That's the answer. He should have hit that, and I put this out. If you follow me on X at Tony Katz, you would have seen this. He needed to do that 20 more times. He only did it a few more times. It should have been a constant, constant refrain. That connected. Don't get me wrong. Tim Walls does a nice little plain-spoken thing. He just wasn't smooth. And you say to me, well, he's not as experienced as J.D. Vance at this. Maybe that's because J.D. Vance does interviews and Tim Walls doesn't do interviews. And that's not me saying it. That's the people. 
at CNN saying it. I mean, I think there was a clear lack of preparation and execution here. I on think that he. Part. I think actually it's the opposite. I think he had too much preparation. Maybe yeah. he had so many lines that he was clearly trying to say yeah. that he didn't listen and said when when uh, JD Vance said one of the many many things he um, really hit Kamala Harris on, not Tim Walz, but Kamala Harris. He didn't respond because he clearly had things in his mind. I think the lack of interviews that he has done with national media, with local media, it showed. He needed more reps. Too late for that. Too late for that. Oh, I have actually have a sound clip for that. I, I, I do believe. Don't I? Yes, I do. You're a bit late for that. You really are. You got 30 days left in this election. I, I don't I, I don't think interviews are going to... Um, make a difference at this point they could have and after the debate jd vance stuck around in the spin room talking to people and tim walls went out for pizza because he's just a regular guy in new york getting a slice of za j uh, jd vance delivered tim walls did better than i expected he did Un- undoubtedly true He did better than expected. When he was able to get himself under control, he actually was engaging in what he thought were were facts, but he had recall. He at least understood the basics of the subject. He did. And that should be respected. Equally so was the fact that this was a civil debate. And part of the problem with, with what people perceive as, as civility is that they, they often think it as intellect. The, the, they're two very, very different things. But we're so starved for the very concept of civility that when we see it, we're like, oh, good Lord, that is spectacular. Yes, 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 yes. Like that's, that is good stuff. Thrilled, finally, two people having a conversation about things that some of us are paying attention to. They didn't discuss all the things, as I said. It was congenial and civil, and people left that debate, turned off their TV saying, man, I wish they had been the top of the ticket. Because there is a real desire for, for normalcy. I I put forth to you that that was the objective of each campaign, and I don't believe actually how they feel. Remember, it's Tim Walls who created the entire meme around J.D. Vance about being weird. These are not uh, such congenial people. They just played the part on TV. That's, That's what took place. But Vance did better than I expected. And I expected, uh, I'm sorry, Walls did better than I expected. Vance actually did much better than I expected. I expected Vance to try and get under Walls' skin. That did not happen. And Walls did not lose his message very often. However, he did have a gaffe talking about Sandy Hook and school shooters. Governor, you previously opposed an assault weapons ban, but it's only later in your political career did you change your position. Why? Yeah, I sat in that office with those Sandy Hook parents. I've become friends with school shooters. I've seen it. Look, the NRA, I was the NRA guy for a long time. They used- let's, let's stop for a second. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? Yeah, I sat in that office with those Sandy Hook parents. I've become friends with school shoot. become friends with school shooters. I've become friends with school shooters. I've become friends with school shooters. I've become friends with school shooters. Yeah, that's bad. And I, 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 I put out on, on X, uh, follow me at Tony Katz. The difference between me and Tim Walls, I am not friends with school shooters. And someone's like, oh, how dare you? It was clearly a gaffe. You know what he meant? That was so cheap for a public figure like yourself. First of all, thank you for the compliment. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be a, a, a public figure, ladies and gentlemen. No, please. No, please. Please stop. You're embarrassing me. Louder, would you? Um... Uh, secondly, uh, take a joke. And third, he said the words. And if Trump had said the words, that's all you people would talk about. A lot of memes come from this. Not only what Tim Wall said right there, his response about China, which we will get into, and of course, how he looked. 
His looking into the camera, his staring into the camera, his staring at J.D. Vance when Vance was answering questions. They're memes all in, in themselves, and the visuals do matter. I'm, I'm thrilled that there was this real admiration for the idea of a civil debate about subjects. And man, I'd be overjoyed if that's what we got back to. But what I'd like to see is actual division, uh, if, if you will, if there's a disagreement. Not just, you know, a chumminess kind of thing, but I know I, I fundamentally disagree, and here's why. And being able to accept that, that would be uh, the end all. That would be the bee's knees, as the kids would say. I don't know if we're there yet, but I like the fact that people embraced it. J.D. Vance walks out of this a clear victor. If I've got National Review and the New York Times both saying the same thing, uh, you could feel good about that. But what matters even more is that this doesn't move the needle at all. (laughs) Nothing's changed. Nothing. Nothing. I'm Tony Katz. This is Tony Katz today.